Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at a particle in a finite well, as opposed to an infinite well. What does that mean? Well, that means that the barriers do not have infinite energy. And in quantum mechanics, that means that a particle could venture outside the trap region. In other words, if we consider one region 1 to be the barrier on the left side and region 3 to be the barrier on the right side and region 2 the region where the particle is located at if the barriers are infinite in height in other words the energy to get out of the region where the particle is at requires an infinite amount of energy then the particle cannot venture into region 1 or region 3 but if the energy required to get into region 1 or to get into region 3 is not infinite but finite, for example, in this case, the energy is equal to u, and u being a finite quantity, then the particle could reside in part in region 1 as well as in region 3. So we're going to take a closer look at that. Now, first of all, we want to understand that the energy of the trapped particle will be less than u. In other words, wherever it's at, the energy of the particle is less than the energy required to get over the barrier. But that doesn't mean it cannot, in part, get through the barrier or at least into the barrier to some distance. So we're going to explore region 1 and region 3. For that, we go back to Schrodinger's equation, which can be written like this. And then, if we replace this quantity right here, as here, so what we do here is we're going to switch u and e, of course u being of higher value than e, but we're going to put a negative in front of it because we switch these around, then we can say that if a is equal to this quantity right here, the Schrodinger equation can be written in a more simplified form like this. And then when you see that, you can recognize it as a differential equation that has the standard solution which are written right here. So we're going to look at the standard solutions for region 1 and region 3. So it's going to be some constant times e to the ax plus some other constant times e to the minus ax and of course the general solution looks exactly the same for both regions 1 and region 2. But now we want to explore those regions just a little bit more. If we're in region 1 and we take a look at the portion right here dE to the minus ax if we allow x to go to negative infinity, so if we go far enough to the left where x becomes a very large negative number, then this quantity dE to the minus ax will also reach infinity. And therefore that doesn't make a lot of sense. In other words, the solution then would become infinite over in this region right here. It doesn't make a lot of sense, so we're going to let d equal 0 to take that away as a possible portion of the solution so that this then disappears. In region 3 we have a similar problem. There, if we allow x to go to infinity, the term f e to the ax also will go to infinity as x goes to infinity. In other words, the value for the solution here will just increase like that exponentially, and that's also not a reasonable solution in that region. So therefore, we assume then that f also goes to zero, which takes away this portion of the solution for region 3, which means we have a solution for region 1 in general that is c e to the ax, a will be determined depending upon the value of E. E is the energy of the particle. The larger the, the value of E becomes, the closer E has enough energy to get out of the barrier, to get over the barrier. So when U minus E becomes a very small number, then A will become a small number. And if A becomes a small number, that means that in region 1, we can go, the particle could potentially go farther into the region. If we then look at region 3, same kind of thing. If, uh, where am I here? Yeah, so if u minus e becomes a very small number, if the energy of the particle gets close to the energy required to get over the barrier, then a will become a small number. And if a is a small number in region, oh, this should be region 3, not region 2, but region 3, then we can see that we can expect a slow decaying function in region 3 from this general solution right there. And so what we're seeing then is that we have a, a solution that kind of looks like this in region 1 and a solution that kind of looks like this in region 3. In other words, the wave function tends to look like this in region 1 and tends to look like this in region 3 for a particle in a finite well, which is then defined by these two solutions for region 1 and region 3. So that's a general approach. Of course, it depends on the value for C and G, and it depends on the value for A, 
which is determined primarily by the mass of the particle and by the difference in the energy of the particle in this region versus the energy required to get over the barrier. And we will see in, in the next few videos that the particle actually tunnel part way through the barrier and exist a little bit in region 3 and a little bit in region 2. And again, the, the greater the energy of the particle in region 2, the closer it gets to the limit of the energy required to go over the barrier, the farther it can tunnel into that forbidden region. And that's actually possible in quantum mechanics. So here we have a nice introduction to the potential well, the finite potential well, and we'll take a look at some more videos to get a little bit more feel and understanding of what that all means. That's how it's done.